So what we're, what we're seeing from customers is that their customers are looking for a more integrated experience. And so therefore, if you've got a device that's connected, you can take action on various things uh, preemptively. So let's say you've got a, a large uh, diesel aircraft engine and you've got that connected some way and you've got signs that maintenance is going to be coming up. And you can take a you can take some analysis on that, trigger that when that plane lands next, they're going to be able to do some maintenance, things like that. So there's, some, there's many examples in B2C. That's an example on the, on the wider kind of B2B of a, a useful uh, large scale example. And so what we're seeing is customers want, number one, the connected nature of IoT. And number two is they want the analytics side of it. They want to be able to take a look at all that data that's out there in aggregate and then do predictions on when we see these things at an aggregate level, then we're able to predict whether it's predictive maintenance, whether it's a predictive behavior, whatever. Take a look at that data and then be able to take some sort of action on that. And we're seeing that those workloads are very spiky. And so a lot of customers want to run that in the cloud because they're not sure how many experiments they're going to run, how wide they're going to be. Uh, obviously, the business level impact of that is going to vary depending on the use case. And so we're seeing a lot of uh, real-world examples around IoT and the business impact that's actually having to customers bottom line. Right. All right. If you take a look at our history, you know, we've been doing this for a very long time, over 10 years. We've been doing this at a large, large scale with our, our simple storage service, which is really a, a huge amount of ingestion. And so it depends on what type of ingestion you're thinking of. If you're thinking of ingestion for an Internet of Things uh, type of deployment, that's going to be a lot of little devices sending little chunks of data. Remember, we also have very large scale where we import uh, you know, live stream video for transcoding. And so we've already got a very large scaled set of infrastructure around the world for specifically set up for data ingestion, as well as, of course, data delivery um, in the other way. Uh, and so that's something that's important. But remember, a lot of these Internet of Thing devices, they actually don't have connectivity or they have internet in intermittent connectivity. We've developed something called Amazon Greengrass, which would allow you to have a lot of that functionality actually on the device. And then when it comes and gets connectivity, it would send that device back. So it just depends on what the use case is. So there's another element of, of Amazon Greengrass. There's nothing like that in the industry at the moment, which is pretty, pretty cutting edge. Imagine you've got um, uh, mining companies, and they have sites which are in, out in the middle of relatively nowhere or disconnected, let's say. Uh, but they've got a lot of data they need to be able to have for that. So you can have a lot of that compute taken to them. You have another product that needs compute at the edge. You can take compute to them. They can also do a, a bunch of sensors there that are actually speaking back to that device and then bringing that data back whenever the mine comes online. Or they physically take a piece of storage from place A to place B and then plug it back in and the data goes back up. So we're seeing a lot more disconnected use cases than we, than we thought. Uh, there's also a lot of manufacturers now starting to integrate this into their overall plans for the future of doing Internet of Things devices, but they have internet intermittent connectivity. And we're seeing a lot of customers that used to do batch analytics. So at midnight or end of month, to run my job. Now people are looking for real-time analytics. Mm -hmm. You know, an example I use in the gaming industry is that uh, if you your, your goal is to be able to keep your gamers in the game. And let's just say that we do analytics to determine once you drop your sword, you're likely to leave. Well, if I see you drop your sword and I give you a diamond or some sort of thing that matters in that game, then you'll stay for five more minutes, as an example. Well, five more minutes times millions of users is actually a real impact. Now, to get that level of insight, if I just drop my, drop my sword, then I've got to have to have real-time analytics to be able to take action on that. As opposed to at midnight, I knew that eight hours ago you were going to drop your sword. So we're seeing a lot of customers move down the path of real-time analytics and taking real-time action on, the, on that as it's actually happening. And what we've done is in AWS, we start to look at what type of functionality already exists inside Amazon that's generically useful to a wider population, and we're starting to make that available as AWS services. Uh, one of those release, recently was released was called uh, Recognition. It looks at a picture and it will spit out metadata. So let's say it takes a picture of a, a, a man and a woman on a beach. It'll spit out, is the man or woman wearing glasses? Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it at a beach? Whatever. There's a bunch of metadata you can take action on. Right. To be able, now that's stuff that we've been working on the, the uh, machine learning over many many years inside Amazon, and now we've made that available externally so that the wider population can take that and use it without having to be machine learning or cognitive experts. They can just use us in an API. You feed in an image, and out comes the metadata, and then you can run that on a wide scale set of them. We have a, an amazing case study on our website from C-SPAN. It's a, a TV station in America, kind of focuses on on the government, and they actually fed in there. 
uh, a bunch of images to identify po uh, politicians who were in the Im in the videos. And so now they can actually see when which politician is in which video, and that saved them many many hours uh, per year. So that's a that's a real real world example of the application of some of those. Another example is Amazon has a product called Alexa. Uh, yes. And we have uh, an Echo. Inside that is a, we use this technology called Lex, L E X. We've now made that available as an AWS service where you can use that, integrate that into your own chat box or any other technology that you're looking to develop. Again, that's something that was developed out inside Amazon around the machine learning, AI, cognitive areas. And now we've made that, made that available. And we're evaluating other options that we have inside Amazon that may be useful to externalize as well. Um, so if I take a look at what could be you know, kind of the next generation of cloud computing, if you think of that's kind of the question you're looking at, is there's, there's a lot of different ways to solve similar things. So right now, you've got uh, Lambda, which is a trigger event, trigger driven way to do compute. Well, of course, you've got uh, containers, you've also got instances, and those are very different ways to ultimately solve a similar problem. And I'm sure we're going to continue to innovate in that particular area. We're also seeing a lot of innovation in the database space. A lot of NoSQL as well as things like Hadoop, and you've got obviously the normal SQL Server, you know, the, the, the relational database elements of Oracle, SQL Server, and MySQL, and those. And so I think there's a lot more innovations to continue to happen in the scale elements. Um, still pretty early days in the serverless computing space compared to what it will be over time. And remember, at Amazon, we still consider it to be day one in the computing, uh, cloud computing environment, so a long way to go.